ever since I known DMX, like he was in pain, right? I, like since 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 I was a kid. Damn. And so um, I just I just know I just know, I know that he's in a better place now. Um, he came to me in a dream, the whole thing. Cause I was definitely on a mission, you know, like like uh, losing a brother so close. Mm. It just it just felt I never felt that before. Hey, this is Mike Tyson and another episode of Hot Boxing. And I'm DJ. Who kid? Hey, um, our guest tonight is hey, he really doesn't need any introduction. God damn it! The one, the only, Swiss speed. Listen. Hey, <laughs> Thank you. You're f up that, the introduction, man. That's what? What? God damn it! <laughs> man, listen, man. Go Thank ahead, you. man. <laughs> Not wasting any time. When is uh, this song dropping, man? Immediately. I want to know right now. When the next song dropping? Immediately, man. Everybody waiting. Immediately. Immediately. I want to <laughs> know when that is dropping. Immediately. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Hey, listen. Stop. You just, uh, you just. Oh, wait, wait, over. Excuse me, can we put the theme song first? <laughs> <laughs> you see, the Tyson 2.0 got me lit right now, man. What is it? What is the 2.0? Oh, you don't want to try it. <laughs> Oh. oh. Hey. I need a blunt. Get high, that's your memory. <laughs> that's our theme. That's our theme song. Light that thing, smoke it. Roll that thing, light that up, smoke it. Roll that up, light that up, smoke it. And since Roll this is our theme song, we want to know where did you get the inspiration to do this? Man. Um, this was, I was in Atlanta at the time, and I always knew that... Um, songs about we uh -huh. were big and I, and I wanted to do something. Uh, I had it for my album. I, I wasn't gonna put Styles P on it at first. Uh -huh. I was like, who can I find to, oh, to, wow. to put on the song? And then I was like, you know what? Styles is great at telling stories. Styles definitely smoke weed. And we just tried it. And uh, it was on my Ghetto Stories album. And then I ended up letting him have it for his album as well. Oh, wow. uh, it went platinum on his album. Oh, <laughs> listen. Um... <laughs> And what about the, the one he did with the Down South crew? I think Lil Wayne was on, all those cats was on it. Um, the remix. Till I Get High? Yeah, remix. Everybody, Lil Wayne was on it. Who was on the remix? There was a couple of people on oh, the remix. Oh, they were blazing it. Well, you know the remix better than me. Yeah. The, we had the remix was... Styles P remix on Get High. Yeah, he oh, definitely well, a lot did. A people did the freestyles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no freestyle. Of, this oh, is a song. It was a oh, really? They must have blazed. What was the name of this song? Oh, shit. Damn, Mike know something mm -hmm. that you don't even know. No, I wish Mike, Mike, the, been on, Mike, <laughs> Mike been on point. I wish I knew the name of the song. <laughs> Man, that, was, that song was, that song, I yeah. mean, for it to be so laid back and... It was powerful. Connect, it was like a it national was, anthem. Yeah, it was a national anthem. Played. He would perform that like, um, you would think they were going to rave or something when that song dropped. You know, a lot, a lot of people look at you as a producer, but you were a DJ to begin it. You did DJ for Rough Riders. You know, I have my own G unit experience. I was it like we both came up on the same yeah. kind of situation. I was that rough rider. Uh, you know, I went through <laughs> shootouts. I went through people getting robbed. No money. Thirty. You didn't ride or die. Thirty too. guys on a tour yeah. bus. Yeah, we had a good time. We had we was young, stupid, yeah. but having a good time. You know, like at the end of the day, when I look back at it, I'm like, man, you know, everything just happened so fast. You know, and 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 nobody was prepared for what was in front mm -hmm. of them. You know, like we we thought we was prepared at that time, but there's no way you can be prepared to come from poverty uh, to such a lifestyle. There's no blueprint to it, brother. You know, no blueprint. That's why yeah, I made no so many blueprint. bad mistakes. Yeah. Yes. Um. You, you never. You know. You know. You go eat, make some money, and eat. Yeah. But next thing, you go to that next level where you can't go outside anymore. Oh. <laughs> and you did at first. You said you wanted it. And sometimes it gets too overbearing. They say, whoa, did I really want this? Yeah. It's just a yeah. trip. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy because, you know, I, I'm, what, 44 now? First first platinum record at 17. Mm. So I got to see, like, um, all different obstacles within the business, outside the business, definitely in the streets. And then even watching the kids today, 
you know, I'm just like, man, like, you know, um, what did we really do? Because it's still not guided. It, it, it's still no, we no. did. We put this, the set the stage. I don't know. I'm not happy with it. Sure, Jogger. We set the stage to not taking no. That mm. too. Nobody's gonna diss me, disrespect me. And nobody definitely gonna disrespect me. No, but that, that, no, it wasn't nothing. That's everybody. If that's the way we grew up in the 80s. Nobody was gonna disrespect me. If you came in, everybody know he's New York, he's a tough guy. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was just the image that we had. I'm gonna fact. take from nobody. That's crazy. We were talking about that, like, and back then, people became artists because they were like groupies to being famous. Or mm. now you came in a transition where people were like kind of like starting to make money. Mm. Like, you know, are you happy you came at that period where yeah. it's not the the weird contracts? And yes. You don't know what's going on. You just want to be famous. And shit. Like, I mean, somebody count your money before you do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was always and still is weird contracts. You know, um, the thing is, we came in as a family. Oh, okay. Right, which was which, uh, was a big plus, and um, and we we didn't have no problem violating who was violating. You know, you violate, you get violated, and that was just the rules. And it worked for a while, and then the industry was like, you know what, it, we can't handle that. You know, we, coming up in the office with dogs and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, what the? Shout out to my uncle's Dan Why, right? But you know, at the end of the day, we was all everybody was fighting for what was deserved. You know, nobody was bullying. Nobody was taking advantage of the corporate guys. It was more like, listen, this is what they we supposed to get paid. We not them other guys. Like, this is what we signed. This this is what we gonna do. And so it was always like fighting for your rights. Oh wow. Um, and at the time, even when you know there was a lot of money going around and different things like that, but you still got to fight. You know, what you what you uh, you either gonna pay with money or time, right? And so. Uh, they had to figure they had, they had to figure out the best way to, to 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 get to the to the exit strategy, you know. Yo, Mike, I'm so excited, man! I can't believe you got Dave's Hot Chicken to sponsor you, man. Like they got a hot box. That's hey, listen, lit. I'm taking the waves. Well, sliders. You gonna have me test these? You gonna have me try? Well, chicken sliders, they call them. The chicken sliders and it's different levels of heat. You gotta look at it. listen because they name them after us. They name these chicken sandwiches after us because you're hot and I'm boxing. Just <laughs> go, man. Jesus, man. Hey, there's three hot boxes. One with ten jumbo size sliders. Whoa. Another with ten jumbo size tenders and go. a box of fries. 18 ounces of awesomely seasoned and Whoa. crispy fries. These juicy, spicy, and hot. Tenders are sliders. You know what I'm saying? They allow you to choose two of our seven levels of spice per hot box, Mike. Holy, holy. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. From no spice to Reaper, the Reaper is made with the Carolina Reaper pepper. Thank you so much, Dave, for hooking us up. Now let's see if who kid can handle the heat, mm, baby. I'm ready to baby taste. Baby is hot, mm. baby. Baby is hot. It's hot, all right. Come on, baby, let's see what you made out of me. You got it in the hot box. Do it. That's why we're here. It's hot because you're hot and I'm boxing. <laughs> and now this is a hot box. They named it after us. They, I can't look, say no to you, Mike. After. I can't say no to Mike. Let me see what this one tastes like, Mike. Well, you got pickles in there. You got, got pickles. pickles. You got a little sauce. Mm -hmm. Are these the first of their kind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, this one's good, Mike. How oh, hot? How hot? You think it's really it's hot? It's like medium. Oh my god! Well, then that's not the one we want. I think. It's a little tingly. <laughs> Let's try this one right here. Oh, it's tingly, Mike. Well, well drink some water, please. Drink go. some water. <laughs> well, we gotta be nervous, Mike. Oh man, this right, is let me try, this, try one. this one. Don't be afraid, baby. Woo! Yeah, I'm sweating. Don't man. be underarm. afraid. Don't be afraid. Uh, eat. My underarm. Come on, let's eat, man. That's the... All right, baby. Let's mm -hmm. eat. This one is getting a little spicier. This is good too. Yeah. It has a little pop. No, no, there's a little special stuff in there. Is that the Reaper? Mmm. This is good, man. You saving the, the worst for last or the best for last? No, I think we're going to save the best for All last. Right. Let me try this last one right here. With, hum with unhumanity. So big. Because there's a lot of heat in there. Oh, a big piece of meat, man. That's why it's really Reckon. hot. Mmm. <laughs> The real deal. No. That's the real deal. Don't be playing, man. Oh my God, this is burning hot. That's the Reaper? Yes. It's, it's no, a wrap. It's, it's over. No, it's no Hot boxing people. for real. Hey, we just got to thank Dave. Thank Dave for giving us this beautiful amount of hot sliders that are killing this poor child. <laughs> no.
That shit is not Mike. Don't fuck with that, man. You won't be able to do the podcast. Wow. That's murder. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Dave's hot chicken with the intensely craveable chicken that's juicy, spicy, and hot. Was it a, a eat what you kill kind of thing in Rough Riders? I used to go to the office. It was scary as hell, dude. Just to get a song was hard. Nah, fun. we just made everybody. <laughs> Everybody, everybody had to earn it, you know. Like, yeah. And in, in order to be in, you had to battle about ten people. Wow. You know, you listen. Had, you don't do that now. You could battle a guy on um, YouTube. You know, yeah. it's boom. <laughs> yeah. You see how we yeah. do the calls? Where everybody's in on the calls. Zoom. Oh, yeah, you could yeah, do yeah, them on Zoom. You could battle somebody on yeah. Zoom now. Yeah, you could battle. So nobody could hit you or touch you. Yeah. <laughs> you could battle a, a emoji now. <laughs> see, uh, you could battle somebody that don't even exist now. Listen. Just, you remember, because you were around um, with Biggie and those guys. Wasn't it like, that's what I thought it was. Um, it was like the fastest gun in the West from this side or the mm. fastest gun, and we meet somewhere and we start rapping and battling. It's yeah. like a shootout, right? Yeah, it was yeah, definitely it was like, like a, a showdown. Shootout. It was definitely a showdown. I, that's what I miss. I remember... Um, I'm talking about the greats. Biggie coming in to battle these like guys. DMX was DMX, DMX some, Somebody yeah, told me, um, Leo Cohn told me something when he went to watch... Um, DM, um, um, homeboy, DMX rap. Yep. You know, he they had a broken jaw. Yeah, I remember and still that. Got the deal. No. And still got the deal. Yeah, he 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 was rap. You didn't know the story? No, you know he had a broken jaw though. Yeah, he rapped through with his jaw broke to Leo and got the deal. And broke his broke the braces out More. of his mouth. Yeah. And Leo was like, Nah, this this is this is the guy. <laughs> oh snap! You know, with what well, intensity. <laughs> I mean, me and me and X used to just we used to uh, run around the Bronx battling people for money. Mm. Like that's how we were surviving. Uh, before, before I had the opportunity it. to meet him once in Phoenix, Arizona. A friend of mine, Ron, who I grew up with, hustling as a kid, ten, twelve years old, wow. was involved with him and Little Mama in, in that situation. Mm. And um, when I met him, he was very smart, articulate, intellectual. I'm saying because I'm high. So I'm saying, this <laughs> me, you know, I'm saying. He this guy, I said, I know, I'm listening to his music. I know he don't talk like that. Nah, he, he but no, he in person. Nah, he, and, you knew that and, too? And, 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 and he's intelligent like that? I know that, of course. <laughs> you, you know, he, listen, he, 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 you guys hear this guy rap, right? Does he sound like he has so any articulate? Yeah. He sounds like he's incredible, in, incredibly insane. <laughs> <laughs> so I expect to see some, yo, know, look, the look, you know, hey, how are you doing? Hey, what's been going on? Is everything fine? I'm like, oh, this guy's. <laughs> With me or something. <laughs> nah, you know, he 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 actually had a lot of respect for you. Really? Super respect. Like, you know, um, loved you a lot, loved how you move. And then I remember uh coming to your place, uh, to your home one time, you invited me, and I remember seeing you with these books and the way that you was moving with the books and 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 I was like, Man, this is how DMX would do the same thing. He'd be reading books and, and quoting lines from out of the books that you you have no idea. You know, he re reciting whole entire books. Uh, he was a very intelligent guy. Very wow. intelligent. I listen. Yeah. Just hearing him talk to me, I didn't expect it. I as he left, he with me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's making fun of me. But yeah, I didn't expect to hear that. Uh, he, he was very spiritual too. I'm sure he spoke to you like that also. Meeting another great man, like uh, I know. He no, I listen. Um, he didn't face me. It's just was he, he was he was getting he was engaging with some, co and I thought he was playing me, but making fun out of me mm -hmm. or something. So. <laughs> nah, he highly respected you. That's a fact. I see. I mean, you talk about the battles, uh, the infamous DMX and Jay Z in their room, and that video came out. That was amazing. Like, yeah, I just wish, I just wish the whole thing came out. Oh, so this, yeah, because it cut off like. I yeah. remember they were battling a little bit. Yeah, they and then they had a um, homeboy from Philly was involved with it too. Oh, that's that's when we did uh, Cassidy and Freeway. Oh yeah. yeah, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was that was iconic. We didn't erase that tape. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, my uncle Y at the time felt that he didn't have X didn't have his uh, lyrics copywritten and. I think some of the lyrics he was oh, using on Jay, okay. he was using on the album as well. Oh, I get it. Okay. So while, you know, coming from the street, it's like, okay, I'm, 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 
I'm trying to be business, so I got to protect the business. Mm -hmm. So he's like, we can keep it going, but I don't know where this tape going to end up. And there's music getting out before all of these particular business points. Um, but I wish the tape, I wish they wouldn't stop that tape. Oh my God. What did you, what did, how did you meet X? Um, through my uncle Y. Yeah? Yeah. And I, I met X, um, I was 15, 16, 15. Did you know something was special about him? Out the gate. I knew he was special when we had the, um, when we had the way we had to look for him. Like in Yonkers, we in Yonkers and, and Y was like, yeah, I'm gonna take you to meet X. But I knew him for his mixtapes first. Cause my uncle Y used to just have DMX mixtapes, um, and so he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna introduce you to X today. This this is my first artist." So we driving, we in the Nissan Z, Burgundy Nissan Z, and wow. we riding through Yonkers, and he's like, "Yo, where X at?" Like, "Yo, he went this way. Yo, where X at?" No, he went over this way. Yo, where X at? And like, we bumped into him through the people. Wow. Right, and that's when I was like, "Wow, he walks with the people because we went to different sides of Yonkers. Like, it wasn't like around the corner." Mm -hmm. Like the whole Yonkers was like, nah, he just went over here. I think he's over there on School Street. Da, da, da. And the people navigated us right to him. And then um, <laughs> and we, we met, and then the next day we hung out. And he writes about this in the book. So we go, you know, I'm staying with him. Ended up spending the night. So the, the, the next day we go out, we go into the store. There's a, a, a bus with a radio on it. And he was like, yeah, you know, I know your uncles and them like that, but I'm, you, you like that too? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm young. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, what? What you saying? He said, like, all right, well, take that radio off the bus. I go take the radio off the bus. I'm running, us, and, and that's the radio that he ended up writing most of his raps with. Wow. And then we've been, we've been, we was locked in from, from that moment right there. He's like, right, I could, I could put you, you got heart. Um, and then we was just tight ever since. You know, it was, Deep, deep, deep relationship. He never Super made a song brother. with Biggie, huh? Nah, he wanted to. Yeah, he wanted to. He wanted to do a song with Pac. He wanted to do a song with Biggie. A lot of people feel like um, he had a problem with Pac. That would have been an awesome song together. Yeah. Two of those cats. Yeah. But X never had no problem. If X had a problem with somebody, you going to know. You know, like, he not, yeah, he, no he's not going to hide. That's what I tell him. Like, yeah. I was like, nah, if X dis, dis Pac, he was a dis Pac, and, and Pac with a new Y, he was dissing him. But he had love for him, so. I mean, I've heard all the DMX beatdowns and stuff. Like, <laughs> he beat a lot of people up in the labels and stuff, like. Oh, oh, those? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah like, he was no, enraged. We're not even talking about the other stuff. He was enraged. What? Kind of guy, huh? You don't fuck with X, man. Yeah, but, but. He was a giant, but a, 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 a sweet person. I ain't gonna say. Oh, he was sweet, but it's, I'm talking you know about I mean? disrespect. Like the disrespect, he don't take that. Shit. No, no, no. Yo. Nah, <laughs> disrespect was uh, that was fun to watch. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. I remember, I remember he told me one time about the R. Kelly thing. Like he was mad at R. Kelly. And shit. Like when was this? It was like when they were in the studio. I and, never uh, heard this. I mean, he, yeah, he went. No, I, the interview's out. I interviewed X on it. So uh, it, X said online. this. Yeah, so X said it's online. Like he he's like. Yo, can I take this this track home? You know what I'm saying? So like, can I take the track to the hotel so I can write to it? Mm. But R. Kelly was like, I guess he was, you know, you know what he's known for. So he was in a room with a hole, peeping through the hole. <laughs> to, so he went to the hole. He was like, Nah, leave it. You can't leave with it, X. And X was like, What? Yo, X went crazy, <laughs> pissed off. But he was calm at that time. But when he came on my show, that's when all the you know all the shit with him and the girls. Was, he was like, Yeah. Man, what the man? They want me to leave with that shit, man. Fuck that. You know how he be like, when he starts, you got to calm it down. But he goes all the way with it. It's out. It's like, the audio is he crazy. He never told me about that story. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Yeah, he know it. shit out, man. Come on. That, come on. No, it's out. It's out. It's online. <laughs> all right. Pull it up. It's on. It's online. We can even hear it. It's like, but DMX talks about R. R Kelly. And it's, it's from my interview. Well, we want to see how you interviewed him, how you navigated this argument. I asked him, I, you know, because we, you know, the, 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 the Oh, shocking, shocking. <laughs> um, it has to be like, the, the, I mean, mine was like the only one I did. Yeah, throwback, 2009 interview. Yeah, yeah. 2009? Yeah. What's that like? It has to be, um. Yeah, does it? Put it up. We got minus in the pink out. Oh. I know what that mean. That, that, that was a different, that was a. Look, 
Damn. Okay, let's finish that. That's enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. You, yeah, his violating. I don't know how you that, punk. Man. Man. You yeah. punk, you you punk him away. What did he do? He did no. some Let's ask yo, I heard you in the studio with R. Kelly, but you know, man. this R. Kelly thing has been like, nah, you set atmosphere. him up. You set him he up. Went ham. You, you set him, him up. You like set him up. Yeah, you got you, you got him pumped up. I ain't gonna you lie. know how it is. It, you know, it, it wild. Money in the wild. bank. Like, Money dude. in the bank. Two thousand and seven. Play the song, baby. Hey. <laughs> 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 we never heard this. Nah. <laughs> So this uh, is like, uh, if you go to Europe, anywhere in Europe, it's still like new, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yo, when Mike, I was messing around on this song, it actually did what it needed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, man, Mike, you go, we went back. Yo. Yeah, he's fly. No <laughs> doubt about that, he's fly, man. <laughs> Got the Bugattis out there, speakers. <laughs> you actually like kind of like I don't know. Yeah, you're like you're the first producer that really didn't need a feature. Like, mm. You rapped on your own records. Listen, what was that hit you had with Lil Wayne? I, I, you know what I'm saying? It's me. No, you had Lil Wayne on the song. What was that? Hit? Oh, you talking about uh, uproar? Mm. Uproar, hit uproar. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Mike, Mike got the zap. I ain't know the oh, yo, I'm a little Wayne. Tyson I'm a little Wayne shit, fan. Yeah. When does Mike Tyson listen to this? It's <laughs> crazy. He's me up every day with this. Look really, at this. It's a vicious comeback. <laughs> yeah, it's it it perfect timing. Oh, yeah. oh. Perfect timing. And this was the last record. This was the last record. I kind of messed with his vocals. He ain't like that. Mm -hmm. And then Mac, and I talked to Mac, I said, this got to be more than just a freestyle because he oh, wow. rapped all the way through. There wasn't no break points where it's like, what the f***, you know, where the love go, fire. I said, oh. when you put this piece throughout, it brings people back and it plays as a chorus. Mm. And so, um, and, then, and then Wayne was like, all right, all right, let's do it. Wow. But that wasn't easy. Another word. <laughs> it's crazy how um, a lot of artists got different styles that you got to like deal with. Like you wanted to be a certain way, like hook, or like the the one on one of making a song, but then they're just like you don't care. You just want to get the. Everybody got to trust each yeah. other. What's the greatest song you think you ever um, produced at this time? I'm for me. I'm gonna always say Stop Drop. Wow, Rough Riders Anthem Rough Rider because Rider. that was that was the, that was the beginning of knowing that I actually had something. I knew that I, I was having fun with what I was doing because I never did the music for. Um, for the for the for the highlights, I, I did it to for them to play it on the block, play it in the club, oh, wow. uh, play it in the skating rinks, play it on the radios, play it out your cars. I was good with that right there. I didn't know that you can make like real money from it, mm. right? So I was like, yo, let's go. We got the whole crew with us, and so I remember Stop Drop uh, coming out, and I was sitting on 125th Street uh, in front of the Mart. And every single car was playing the song. And nobody knew I did the song at this time. And I was just sitting back for hours like, damn, like, this is this is different. And then I remember people congratulating me. I didn't know what this, Leo <laughs> Cohen, everybody oh, was wow. trying to get in touch with me. And um, it was a long time where people didn't even know what I looked like. They thought Swiss Beats was a, was a, was, was a few people. Oh, wow. Because it's Swiss Beats, right? So they thought like, yo, where's Swiss click. Beats at? Like, yeah. So he thinking, I'm in the airport, like, yo, where's the rest of the stuff? Tell everybody from Swiss Beats. I said, what's up? I was like, yeah, I ain't that tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they thought I was a couple of people because how the name was spelled. But um, Rough Riders Anthem definitely changed me and DMX's life mm. at the same time. And he didn't want to do the song. You know, he 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 lost a bet uh, to my Uncle D uh, in the card game. And then D was like, you know, um, what? You lose lose a bet, do the, do the song. So if you listen to the song, he kind he's kind of irritated on the song, <laughs> <laughs> right? But he didn't lose the bet because Yo, it became man. Rough Riders Anthem. That's crazy. You know, and that crossed him over uh, to a whole nother world, uh, to where he was doing Woodstock. He did, we did Woodstock. Uh, I never that seen so many people. That must have blew his ever. mind, you know, coming from where he came from. Oh. Boom. I couldn't believe it, and it just was it was just happening so fast, you know. Like one day we on a we on a bus going to Maryland with 
with toys under the seat. And the next yep. thing, you know, next thing we had um, doing Woodstock. You know, that's like. With your lawyer in the seat. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Facts. It's, it's, no, that's it's, real talk, right? Yes. First with those toys, now I have my lawyer in here with this. Facts. Story. Yeah, it's, it's moving, how it goes. Moving, moving different, you know. Uh, but we we had a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie. Like we, I we always say that fun. me and my wife just um, the struggle was be it's a beautiful struggle. You have to get your goal, accomplish your goal, or even mm -hmm. something close to your goal. It's the struggle mm -hmm. that seemed tough at the time, but once it's over, it's beautiful because it cuts a it cuts some kind of your, a root from you. For sure. When you no longer have to struggle. Yeah. That's a fact. I mean, you've done a lot of amazing shit. So what was the last thing that blew your mind? Like, was it Mandela? Was it like, I don't know, was it like, I don't know, you were like, I mean, was there anything? I mean, you, you, you're you doing so much stuff that you must be desensitized to like. Mm -mm. I'm still a student. Yeah. You know, like I just look at everything as, you know, just being a student of life, period. Because like, you know, I, I see a lot of people feel like they know it all. I think like when you stop learning, you stop living. Mm. Right, so I'm just open to new things. I'm open to traveling, which is why I travel so much, and also just uh, passing the information down to the youth as well. You know, not just holding it all into myself, and okay. you know, like giving people uh, goals and, and, and show them that you know, if I could do it, you could do it better. Mm. Exactly, knowledge right. is nothing. It doesn't mean nothing if it's not shared. Yeah, everything has to be shared to be powerful. You can't be powerful by yourself That's a with fact. knowledge. I mean, speaking of knowledge, these are first for me to understand anything with art, like to like look into it. Like you were actually like spokesperson for. Like, <laughs> I mean, who else promoted art besides Jay? Jay kicked about it in in bars and stuff, but you actually like <laughs> encourage people to look into that shit. Like, there's value. There's like you yeah. know, yeah, generational I, I, wealth in that shit. Kind of, I knew that it was a currency that we wasn't exploring. You know, yeah. I knew that. Um, and I knew that if it had the right introduction and the right entry point, uh, people could have fun with it, share it in their homes, and actually um, collect a part of our own culture. And so that's why I, uh, I started the Dean Collection, which is our personal collection, um, and then No Commissions, which is the art fair, mm -hmm. that the artists keep 100% of their sales, because everybody was doing all these things for artists, but then the artists kind of got to find their way home. You know, it's like, oh, damn, wow. you just sold out a show. What you need to ride back on the plane with me for? What you need a hotel room for me for? And it's like, yo, I don't, they don't pay us until like eight months after the show. I'm like, mm, we say all these things for the artists, but then the gallery win, the collector win, this person win, and the artist kind of got to find their way home. Damn. So I was like, let's do. Well, I'm, um, I had the opportunity to meet um, some people that have at least um, $500 million of art in their house, mm -hmm. and that's nothing. And that's nothing. Five hundred billion. Listen, these people got money and they are billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. That's why the Nazis confiscated all of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see the knowledge kicking? Yo. You see that? I mean, when you had your mansion and I mean you had art everywhere, do you have like famous artists come through? Oh, since you said when I was at least twenty one years old, I moved to a place in New Jersey called Bernardsville. Mm -hmm. The Mars lived there, Eminem lived there, Ingle Hearts lived there. And so um, Diamond Jim Brady's family lived there. Mm. That's the, this is just um, Wasp is coming. So I went to this lady's house. Her name is Jane Inglehart. Mm. And no who else? Malcolm Forbes came to my house too. Oh, shit. He lived in the neighborhood. But I went to this um, lady. She was an older lady. And she had, um, you know, Van Gogh's or the blue period when it's, I guess it's, his friend died, so he went through a blue period, had blue painting. Mm. And um, I wanted to touch it. Mm. And they don't touch it. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you touch it, alarm goes off. Boo! <laughs> no, because the alarm goes off if you touch it. Oh, okay, the alarm okay. would go off. And so um, very early in my life, I, I've um, experienced, I don't know, vast wealth. And I just really I realized that um, people believe... Um, that money's gonna make them happy, make them beautiful. But if if you believe that, that a lot you're of money's gonna make shit. you happy, you never had a lot of money before. Mm. <laughs> oh, shit. That's the fact. That that's yeah. real. No, because I know a lot of poor kings. Ooh. And, I, and I know some people They're not uh, poor, they're broke. That's what they they they're not poor, that's why they're uh, kings. Yeah. They're broke because they made mistakes. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and I've seen that, I've seen that energy. I'm like, you know, 
some people some people are so poor all they have is money. Exactly. No family, no friends. Damn. Health not right. You know, but you on you on you on. Nobody's going you, to your funeral. Yeah, you on six hundred <laughs> feet on the water. What? Uh, Nobody's with, going with to your funeral. People. That's I met not, a lot of great men, but all those great men I met wasn't good men. Yeah. You know, it's all about sharing. I agree with that. Man. You know, uh, my final thing on art, I went to the Louvre, shit, and y'all know you were pissed off. What's that? The Louvre. You went there in Paris. Oh, yeah, I've been there once so, I was a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been there so many times. Were you mad when you went to Mona Lisa? And this thing. <laughs> so it was like this tiny. No, I've, I read about it being small and stuff I like that. Like it's like this giant, like, it's like, it's like the picture right there. <laughs> <laughs> they got like, you can't take photos of it. I was like, homie, I just walked two hours to come in deep in this. I can't take a photo. Listen, I, I, sometimes I would just get on the Concord just to go to the loop. Oh, really? Just to go to the loop. Oh, so they got, you, you get the prop. You think, come on, it's like tight. Nah, well, you I mean, don't understand. No, but listen, they cut me. They, I, I don't have to wait in a line. So you just be the on long. But yeah. You know, I know I don't look at it as um, I'm fly just by the grace of God. I'm not no fly, mm -hmm. I'm stu ridiculous, <laughs> stupid. But just by just by the grace of God, He allowed me to you know experience this part oh, of life. Wow. He knew I needed that. That's fire though. But were you happy to see it? Like I mean, were you like when you saw Listen, the Mona Lisa? Like no, because I've heard many stories about the Mona Lisa as I was growing up, growing up as a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that's um, Michelangelo's cousin or something, and it's just so many stories about the Mona Lisa. It's always conspiracy. Mm. That's a fact. I mean, there's there's a lot of other artworks that got my attention. You ever went to Rain? Mm -hmm. You've been to Rain, Florida. That's where all the Merovingian kings mm. and queens were buried and stuff. You see, you see, and you see listen, I'm telling you, check this out. See, see, remember the witch? Mem check, I'm gonna blow you this. This go. <laughs> remember the witch in that cartoon? I forgot what it, she was. Broomhilda. Yeah, Broomhilda. She the was witch. In, uh, she was a cartoon. I forgot the cartoon she was on. She Broomhilda. was the witch. What cartoon was that? But Broomhilda is one of the most vicious, maniacal, um, Merovingian queens. She killed more queens and kings than anybody. So they took that name Broomhilda and made it a cartoon character. Mm. Made it mm. real. But that's a real person. Mm. I know you see. Yeah. We have to come here to learn that. Now, Mike is sharp. I'm telling you right now. I, I've seen it for a long time. I'm a... You know, I'm, I'm a big, about big, big fan. Listen, you have to like, think you know, about it, you know. Who are we? Where we came from? How did this first start? How did inter eternity first begin? Mm. You know, what's the beginning of eternity? Why um, in every part of the world, no matter what time it was, in the end it's all, they all prayed. Mm. It's scary, right? What was on the walls in the caves? Yeah, idiot. Oh, idiot prayer. <laughs> He's gonna pray now. You being an expert in art, you have to be by now. I mean, Steve. did you learn stories or hidden histories or truths behind that? And you, I mean, I don't know if you could talk about it. I don't want to get killed after this. About movie, what? But you know, when you when you find secrets in these like billion dollar paintings, man, like yeah, I mean, you just told me so. Like, I can't all, believe. all expressions, you know, they like. Yeah. Like if, if Mike was to do a painting, it'd be an expression of what he's feeling at that current moment. If you was to do a painting, it's your expression, right? Like there's no wrong way to do art. You either can uh, connect with the expression or not, you know, because there's somebody out there that's gonna feel a rage in the painting that's gonna go back and do the homework like what Mike said about who was, the witch. Who was the, the lady with the mustache and the eyebrow? What was her name again? The Spanish lady. What's her name? Frida, Frida Kahlo. Frida, and who was her, who was her man name again? He was a famous artist as well. Pop. No, it's another guy. That's her husband or her lover. Diego, yeah, Diego Rivers, what's his name? Yeah, Rivera. Yeah, he was a great artist as well. You know, and um, this is so interesting about, I seen a, in the Louvre, it's a, See, this is why I'm it's a, a statue of the Louvre, but it's just a educate. rock, and it's 25,000 years before Christ. Mm. You know, some of the um, what is, it was just it was just amazing. Two hundred and fifty years before Christ. How do they know that? How do they know how to make time? How does time become an adjustment? I know at one time, hey, what are we doing? We're partying all night. We're doing this all night. What are we doing? Yeah, so we had thirty we had, days yeah. and all that. So yeah. who who, who mm. dissected time? That in, order, in order for us to be able to have a 
I don't know, a uh, consistent life? Who di- who directed time? How did how did time come into existence? Mm. How did it begin? Why are we here? Who's the first one of us? How old is he? A trillion? How do we? How do these guys tell how old the tree is? For real? You, you got how, so many rings around, so you could tell how old is, <laughs> every ring is a thousand years. Yeah. Give me a give me a break. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> They're debating whether the man on the moon was real or not now. That's crazy. What do we know? No, tell me. What do you? What do we know? We know what liars told mm. us mm. In, in the book. That's what oh. we know. Mm. We know what liars told us. Yeah, I mean, you can say that art can be used to secretly communicate with other. No, that's what. Right? Listen, that's the only reason it's been um, <laughs> that's created. Vinci code. Yeah, I don't no, know. That's like, the only reason art's been created to be able to speak without being able to speak and mm-hmm. not be violated. That's what it was all about. Yeah, you can hide under that art umbrella for sure. I'm trying to find out what was the the. He had this something. Oh, I forgot the painting. It was about war. He did the the manual, um, the mural, and then um, he was he worked for Rockefeller, I believe. Oh, a Van a Vanderbilt one. Story, he worked for Vanderbilt. Get out of here, Vanderbilt one. Oh, let's go somewhere. <laughs> no, wait, now listen, your mom, <laughs> your mother and father was born where in Atlanta? Get out of here, man. Yeah, in the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, been born in the Bronx. Yes. Okay. Cool. How many? Listen, so many. Of you. How many of you guys? <laughs> the deans. The deans. Unlimited, man. Is I'm still meeting new deans. Ain't that a trip? Yeah, You're all I'm over still the world. Deans. It's crazy. <laughs> And he yeah, wrote, he, but Mike, Mike was the first person I seen put Versace pillows in, 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 in the Range Rover. Oh. <laughs> and I, I remember in Jersey, it was this one place, he was like, yo, those are Mike cars right there. Oh, wow. And he had the Versace pillows in there. Then he had what? the Continental, the, the Bentley Continental, like this purplish blue, uh, the T-top, the, the, I think it's the Continental, the, the, uh, the right. SC or something. Like, I'm, I'm, I remember that. The SC and, hey, listen, and just the way that like he was just so ahead of his time with with with, with the quality and not that those quality things uh, make you who you are but just yeah. the taste level of Mike listen, has always been. I used to read what level. these guys used to ride back in the day, Ford and all these guys, fans. These guys lived the, the life. They lived unlimited life. That's how I wanted to live my life. Hey, unlimited, don't matter. And you were going so fast at the, at those time periods. How do you have time to? Respect all this cool stuff. Like, well, um, you probably just leave that shit. Like, he's so oh, many times, many, uh, many times. Oh <laughs> man, listen, I go into a shop. It's a beautiful girl selling me the car. I'm asking, yeah. what is your percentage of the car? The Rolls Royce, four hundred thousand dollars. She says, this is my percentage. I say, okay, I'm gonna buy this car. You gotta come hang out with me for a weekend. And uh, that's your type of life was. I was a little kid, twenty two years old. That's how people thought. Oh, you mm-hmm. want to call to hang out with me? I got five. I got what? Two hundred million dollars in the bank, and this is gonna bring you to me. Huh? Take that. You never thought that. You, you never thought that back then. <laughs> listen, he listen. He had the money too. Of he course. know that's nothing. Hundred thousand nuts. Must be going having away. like Illuminati cars, like weird ass spikes and all that. What are you, spikers, whatever. You always got some future. I used to get stuff. my friend's car. I would buy. Yeah. Rolls, we all buy five <laughs> Rolls Royces and stuff. You got to give it away too. You can't keep all that fucking. <laughs> He's not giving away his car. You, all that you be fun. having some stuff that I've never seen, and you import them from overseas, right? Yeah. You can't buy that here. You and Buster, I think Buster Rhymes used to do that back in the days. But I mean, like for me, the way I look at cars now, um, I you got actually, like Bugattis and stuff now. Huh? I do all Ferraris now. Yeah, yeah. that's they, the best way to go. You can't lose with that name. Just, just, <laughs> just one brand, because like I'm just tired. I was, I was tired of just having things. Mm-hmm. You know, like you get a thing with a chance, but it's just like I got this, I got that. It's like okay, I, I'd rather focus on something and build. Not only a collection with the cars, but a relationship with the company, mm. right? Like I'm in Italy uh, doing Close the cavalcades and Ferrari. Um, it's a relationship thing, you know. Like, are you are you familiar with Pina Farina? Yeah, for sure. Have you met him? No, I've met him before. Wow, see Mike, man, yo, with, with, um, Mike is hell, yo. <laughs> Flavio, your Flavio, the designer, uh, came to my house uh, about two months ago to to sketch. Um, some of the new works that he's doing with the cars and stuff. Flavio's like new, huh? Yeah. Can't be serious. Man. Yeah, yeah. I always, listen, I always wanted, I always wanted one of those mean cars named after me. Remember, I remember when the La- Diablo Lamborghini came out, what was that, 96? That was a monster. You had a white one, right? You had a yellow one, a yeah. white one, a black one. I remember saying with a white one. I was like, 
Nah, like I like Mike was the person I was looking up to with the cars, right? Like, cause he was always like a step ahead, even with the aesthetics. Like when I seen the Versace pillows in the car set, no way. I just, nah. I just always, um, I read about those guys how they lived their life. No, <laughs> you never met Basquiat, cause this guy got like no, no you never. Have ran you up met him? No, no, no. He, no, he, he was yeah. in the eighties. Yeah, that's what I'm Same saying. time period, but we never was. That's crazy. No. Damn, if, you, if it was a Basquiat Tyson piece, oh, oh for that man, serious. Are you assessing that? How much you think that would be worth right now? 10, 20 50. billion, ten billion? No, nah, about fifty. Wow, it's two icons. Oh um, no, I don't look at myself as an icon. Get out of here, man. No, you got to No, listen, brother. Um, in my life, it's me, me as a person. I'm just speak, I mean, speaking of me. I know my flaws. I know what. Yeah. So I have to always tell myself, you ain't. Because if I don't, I can turn into a really asshole. But I disagree with you. No, you, you can disagree, but yeah, you don't know I, me I well do. enough to disagree. Basquiat, Mike Tyson piece? No, Yo, no I, didn't, I, didn't talk, I didn't talk about um, yeah, I know, but I'm people just giving that you legend example. stuff. Please, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get into that <laughs> stuff. I know who I am. I don't get into that. But I can call you a legend. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. I feel like that, too. Like, you know, like we, we all human at, at the end of the day. And then show me somebody perfectly. I, you, you show me nobody. Mm. No one's perfect. Yeah, no, right? but we so, all are God. We all are God. My, my daughter even, def, um, she read that in the Bible to me that we are all God, just that we can die like humans, but we're all God. Mm. So I say, I think I, I think I go for that. I go for that. I mean, you know, you're talking about this beats here. This guy got wild taste, man. Like, I he only to, produce I for like to, certain people now, like it's Beyonce, Jay Z. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's like that's it, right? Yeah. You, you're like just good nah, wine all you day. No, nah, I'm just, I'm just actually having fun, being a dad, being a husband, um, being an explorer. You know, mm -hmm. I love traveling. I love seeing different cultures. I love uh, instead of people telling me about other places, I like to go there and sit. Where have you been? Well, mainly, mainly in the Middle East right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah I've been developing a lot in Saudi. You I saw know. you with a camel, a camel team, a camel. Wait, I just team? came yeah, back from there. I just came back. Yeah, I think that I was there. I was where else? I was in Jeddah. Where else? We in you Dubai. was in Jeddah. You went to Riyadh. Mm. Yeah, then went to Dubai. Mm. Then you went to then you went then you went uh, to Mecca. Yeah, but after Mecca, we we came back. I was on where was I at? I was in Jeddah, and I said I'm gonna go there. It wasn't a long. Yeah, like 40 minutes. Distance, yeah, so I went there. We hung out. He was, was happy when he came back. He really loved that trip. Nah, it was man. amazing. I mean, uh, I brought Khaled out there. For, it's uh, just, for it was you no, know, it, it's they did so much um, building on it. It seemed so small because it's so big. The mm. people seem like so small. Last time I've been there, it was um, it's a amalgamation, just people from all over the world pushing mm. each other. Now it seems just like a, a small amount because they built out so much. Yeah, they built it out. They built it out a lot. It was, I guess, it was more people were coming in as time went on. Yeah, I forgot the numbers. The numbers are crazy. The numbers are crazy. So you be screaming like, "God damn it!" The camels no, and stuff like, like that. The camel so racing, crazy. like that's that'll. Man, that, he talking. You know, I have, I have a camel team and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah racing, racing, racing team. Racing. Yeah, yeah. I got the first, the first. Uh, uh, American camel team ever over there, and we we Can like we get Mike name on the camel? Can we get Mike on the camel? Like, yeah. like, a, like a F1 I'll car? I'll do it tonight. Yo, yo F1 Mike, we got to put you on the I'll F1 send F1. you the race schedule and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. It's for I was real. on a camel. Uh, camel. <laughs> you know it was a camel. I was on the Egypt. I was the Egypt on a camel. And just, I didn't feel comfortable that high in the air. With no, the, really? But cool. you know, you know, you know our camp, people don't ride our camels. They, it, no. Yeah. We, there's, there's it's no, just the camels riding. It's just the camels I'm racing. just saying, yeah. when I was on the camel, it's too high. It looks, it's just. It's, you feel like you're going to, especially when right. they come down, you feel like you're going to do yeah, a front flip. It just don't look right. You feel like you're going to do it. But, but for me, the whole camel experience, I just wanted to tap into something different, you know, just to open up the youth minds mm -hmm. that, you know, you could do anything you want to do. Go over here, have a camel racing team. But the cool part was um, actually being in the desert with the Bedouins and, and learning mm -hmm. about the culture. Yeah, and, I did that also. That's um, cool. Seeing how they pray, see how they uh, connect mm -hmm. and, and as a community, like, and then showing my kids that and then letting them see that and participate. Have you been to India? No, not yet. Oh, that's yeah. gonna be interesting. Yeah, my that's wife, really India, is high on the list. She's that's like, gonna be very interesting. Yeah. We've been to the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. I didn't go there. You have to we, fly there, right? No, you, just, you go to India and you just travel. No, but I was, I was in Mumbai, but they said I could, it wasn't nearby. I have to get on another plane 
to go to. Well, it's something worth going to. Yeah. It and, is. Um, what was the, What was the best thing? What was the best thing that that made it stick with you? Like, what, what was like? What made it like a great place to you? Oh man, it's um. I went to. It's a place where there's people who are the lowest, on the lowest um. Form a lowest form of the ladder there, mm. and they um and if they're born in that life, they can never get make their way and work out of that life. They have to be pretty much the lowest what? human on that country. Yes, um, I didn't understand that either. There's okay. a name. It's a name. I don't know the name. Excuse me again. Cast system. Mm. And um, that's what? where I, that's what I I love to go there and just hang out with them. They don't even acknowledge me. They know their job is to clean the shit, to clean the sewage, whatever it is. They don't even acknowledge me. The other people do. The people who are supposedly mm. the higher caste, they acknowledge me. These people don't acknowledge me. So I like being around them. Mm. They do nothing but clean the sewage. Mm. And I say, wow. In America, when we first came here, that's who we were. Mm. That's a fact. They just that way for the rest of their life. Stuck. From what they told me. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how it works, baby? Wow. What they told me. Like, how you get picked to do that? Like, is this like being in the hood? I know, like, you're born, born into in it. it. Yeah, I believe. That's what I believe they told me. Yeah, how does that work? You're born into a system where you can, well, we, we know what that was about. Born in a system where you're born not to win. Yeah, I tell people all the time, like, we think the hood is tough. The hood is sweet. Right. No, this is the best, this the best um, country on the planet. Even with his racism, it's the best country on the planet, baby. I've been in some <laughs> wild, crazy parts, man. And I feel like, man, I don't know why they're crying in the U.S. Mm -mm. Look, if you got yeah, socks on and shoes, yeah. you already won. Yeah, Listen, exactly. if you got, if you you got life in prison in, in one of these, oh, in my this God, country, that's beautiful. Imagine? If you have life in prison, you know you're not going to live your life out. <laughs> you know you're not going to make it five, ten years. Mm. You know that. <laughs> That's that's paradise, lifetime in prison in America. That's paradise, baby. You can eat your cookies. They bring you cookies and milk. Oh, God. You, tw you kill 100 people, but take the cookies and I don't milk. I want to think about jail in India. <laughs> you imagine jail in India? Well, listen, in those jails, you have no, some jails, you have no cells. Just wide open, throw all the animals in yeah. together. Uh, yeah. And yeah. kill each other. Damn, there's no love. Let it, let it fly. Mm -mm, yeah, because yeah, a lot of jails overseas, is you have to have like a sponsor or a family member to bring you food take care of you. The system doesn't take care of you. You know, so I've been in some of these Arab countries, yeah. right? And I hate, you know, they have their own way of living. I'm not going to dictate. <laughs> but so yeah. I was looking at some, I said, God damn, like you go to some of the judges, say, how does a Jew get locked up here? How the, what would a Jew want to come here for? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why, I'm saying to myself to this, why would he even want to come here? How, what is he doing in one of these people's prisons? <laughs> it, I know it's not, oh man, it's, just not, it's not good. Or some Christian guy or yeah, something yeah, yeah. that come over there. Holy shit. How yes. much balls you got to do that? Because you know they're going to kill you right away. <laughs> God. Yeah, let me make it clear too. India, I tried to buy art there. They don't play no games. They are so expensive over there. They like get that American they know, bullshit. They, they know you a tourist. Yeah, they think I'm a tourist. Try to tr trick them and shit. Try to you know what I did see in thing. India? I saw um once. Let me tell you this one. If it's a cow, the cow might look like oh god, he's sick and dying. If you hit him, he died. They're gonna kill you. Oh yeah, that's, that's their god. Yeah, right. if you hit a cow yeah. and it oh, died, a cow. Yeah. A cow. And they die, you're gonna die. <laughs> in India? Oh, uh, if I hit the right, baby? Uh, they don't oh, eat beef no. in India? No. no beef. Wow. Yeah, it's like they're gods, so the cars drive around. And listen, you know, you know, never if you, you have your money, yeah. if you have your wallet out or your money out trying to count it, a baboon will snatch it and run. <laughs> <laughs> right, baby? It will snatch your shit and run. Dang. I saw him grab somebody's phone before it take off. <laughs> I got your phone, it took off. The baboons. <laughs> Did you feel bad about the the poor kids and then you know they they look so fucked up that you want to give them money but the the promoter was like don't give them money yeah, all they gonna listen. do is meet up with somebody and there's thousands of them they yeah. need one guy and he yeah. give them all the money it is uh, yeah right so, yeah no doubt about it but listen I don't give them the money for them I give it to them for me but I get the pleasure out of it not for them yeah but they're giving it to somebody else like, no, that's that's a lot working okay all right okay it's not all about you. And how you feel. No, I wanted to give it. But the I know, guy, but, the but promoter was telling me yeah, don't do nah, it. No, nah, but it's but it's bigger. It's bigger than the system, it's bigger but. than him. 
Okay. He don't care about people. Uh, he fuck uh, them. Uh, uh, no, fuck him. <laughs> him. <laughs> Yo, in the beginning, Swiss, man, you know, I heard, like, the blackout was the reason you became, like, uh, a DJ or a producer. What blackout? So there was a blackout, and then... Uh, I know 77 blackout. Like, one of those kind of blackouts where everything was fucked up, they were raiding everything, and you stole an NPC from... Uh, I mean, it's too late to get locked up now, but... From, You'd be uh, surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you need a, he's, a, he's a black Sam man, too. You'd be surprised. You stole an MPC, uh, MP from about You'd be Sam surprised. Is, is that true? Is that is that one of the truths of your beginnings and how you got your um, first... You no, know, I started as a DJ in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I, 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 was, I, was, I was rapping, but I was only taking, like, DMX lyrics and reusing them. Oh shit! <laughs> so I was the baddest in, in in my school, but then I was like, all right, well, that, that, I can't really do that for much longer. But then I seen the DJ getting a lot of attention as well, and I was like, wait a minute, I can control the crowd, and 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 uh, DJ for the artist too. Wow! I was like, okay, I like this. This is what I like, and I just started DJing and uh, DJing all of the uh, house parties. DJing, I never went to the proms, but I DJed all of them. Wow. Um, and music just was always my thread. Like, no matter what was going on in the streets, I would always go back to the music. And I think that the music definitely, definitely 1,000% saved me from the streets. Cause no doubt. While I was going back in making my mixtapes, I would come out and, and, and people would have been shot, this, that, oh. all type of different things happening. Um, yeah, I got my book coming out. Um, oh. Uh, it's called My Bronx Tale. And, and it's about my story. Uh, growing up in the Bronx, which a lot of it, I for, I, I'm not going to say I forgot about, but I put it like on a vote. You know, like when, when you put, when it's just like, mm. you're trying to move forward and it's like, you know what, I'm going to just leave that sure. where that was. But when they was questioning me for my book, it was it was bringing up all type of Excuse stuff. Excuse me for yeah. yawning, but that's for my, my mushrooms. Mushrooms make you yawn. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, look, I thought I was saying some boring shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, James. <laughs> Good mushroom, brother. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then I became uh, a producer because D&Y, um, they started Rough Riders and, and my aunt Siobhan, and I was in Atlanta. Mm. Uh, got kicked out of all those schools in New, New York, and so I had to go to Atlanta. And then um, they was like, you're the only person in the family doing music. You should come to New York for the summer and see, you know, we got this Rough Rider thing you should come and mess with it. And I went went to New York and it was over. I was like, this is what we this is what I'm doing. He's my uh, secret yeah. connect when I used to get Rough Rider leaks. Here it is right here. I'm not the leak. Yeah. <laughs> nah, cause, we, Cause we had a slogan for that. You leak, you get leaked. <laughs> the leak is the leaker. Yeah, you get leaked. <laughs> well, not leaks. Well, if I needed like current records or whatever, yeah, yeah, I that. would meet him. I the leak. This, hey, this is the white no black motherfucker I know. No, yeah. two 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 artists like two crews. You don't leak. Wu Tang, Rough Riders, and of course Fat Joe's Click, Turn Squad. Those are the three clicks you don't. Tell leak. me about band from TV. Oh man, oh man, that's the. You know, because band from TV happened before Rough Riders Anthem, mm. and so like it was it was crazy. Although Rough Riders was the family, I, my family is so. They militant, right? Like you know, my my, my grandfather, my grandfather's Imam Shams mm -hmm. Dean, uh, Mosh Number Seven, the whole everything, um, and so our whole bloodline has just always been like you had to earn your keep, right? Family, no family. So they wasn't used to me um, transitioning from a DJ yet. So they had Greece, they had other producers and things like that. So I had That's to, I, bring up, I had dude. to go outside the family mm. and. You know, oh, produce band okay. from TV, produce tear the roof off, produce uh, with wow. Buster, produce um, flip mode squad, run for cover, and then when those started buzzing, the fan is like, oh, okay, let's go. Okay, oh, well, he's, he's, they see me. I, I was outside, you know, making not not leaning on them yeah. as as the nephew, and then um, that's what happened. But band from TV, the funniest part about it is the, the beat which you hear was the intro, like they never let the beat drop. Yeah, that was that was. Hey, show me what you yeah, talking about. That was just about. the intro. Like the, nobody never heard the full beat of Band from TV. Cause they, they, like show the real beat. Yeah, it was the, the intro. real beat, right, baby? Hey, my friend, real beat. Right. Lori Pun. 
That was hard. I remember seeing Pun sleeping on the couch. The couch was so low to the ground. I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> they were levitating. Yo, I'd never seen that. I came in the studio, Pun was sleeping on the couch. The Jeez. couch was like, boom. I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man. Yo, man. But that was like crazy. <laughs> nah, I, t I told Nori, I said, yo, what happened to the beat? It's like, yo, everybody just, pun came and was like, yo, I'm just doing it. I was like, okay, well, but the beat never dropped. He's like, nah, we, everybody just wrote to us, so let's just leave it. I said, all right, cool. That's an instant classic, though. Play the music. That's the best mixtape That's that ever. song. Yo, Mike got that thing. He might know. He, woo. Sleep a hell. Free well. Oh, uh, that's the beat. Ooh, that's the, the you could do a little, little workout training to that. Ah, ah, ah. A wild loop. And there's no sample there. Like, that's all, all original. That's all you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't sampling at, the, at this time for sure. 90% of the catalog is no samples. Mm. Weigh a buck 70. This is the hottest mixtape leak ever. Oh my He's God. blazing. Blazing. He say. And when DJ Clue leaked this, I was just. Clue oh. leaked it for him? Woo, big day. He blazed, pun blazed. Trying to tell you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Leave your whole body right. fully reversed. Mm. Mm. I'm, in my <laughs> I'm a bubble head. Oh, <laughs> told you, man. Poet's I played this song over and over so many times. Man. For hours driving. That's, that's an honor. Like the head act, man. That's, Ooh, I'm this nigga blazed too. Tonight. The camera on blazed this too. Oh, if I got camera. Was yeah, cause I produced camera album before this. I produced uh, mm. his first album. Wow. Glory, Shanghai, all of those. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh shit. Ooh. This beat was just too hard, man. And it's so simple. And it be, because I believe in letting the artist have the breathing space so you can mm. feel the character. And some people thought I was too simple. Nah, this is not simple. Ooh. Bro, can you better than this. Oh my the God. The first in and out, just... they look like babies. They go your man Styles P right there, Mike. No, I'm looking at him, Blaze. Put in the glass jar. Moke me out. Poking <laughs> out. This back then with songs used to be crazy long, right? <laughs> it be two hours long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no chorus. How long was this? It gotta be like. Uh, how long is the song? Yeah. About like six minutes. Ugh. Isn't it bugged out how songs are like a minute and change now? And those those are like hits from the kids. Like you hear them like. Hey, know. that's Nor Nori right there? Yeah. Yeah, Nori was lit back then, man. He's still, I mean, he, to me, he's still one of my favorite artists, yo. Yeah, he came with that, he came with that energy, you know, like it was something different for Queens. I did, you know he's the first artist I DJed for. Nori? Yeah. Before, man, when, when they I came out with, with when they came out with T-O-N-Y, good night. Oh yeah. T-O-N-Y, <laughs> invade and Y, multiply. Or oh, LA, LA, big city of dreams. Oh, I, I, I like LA, I like it. <laughs> Till when why like <laughs> that's when I was like army fatigues every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty man. Speaking of Jadakiss, man, like the verses, man. I don't know y'all created so much chaos with those verses, man. The, it's been the, it was the, a the, blessing. The, 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 Tell me about the verses. The Jadakiss, yeah. man. Like, did you expect it to go down like that? I never saw what, that. What did it what did it go down like? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Dip, dip set, dip, dip, dip set uh <laughs> verse locks. Oh, yeah, I remember versus. that. Yeah, so, you know, Versus was created uh, with me and Timberland during the pandemic. Um, that's been a super, super blessing. Uh, it got people through a lot of times when we wasn't sure mm -hmm. what the hell the world was going through. We gave them music, 
And it's cool because we actually got a documentary coming out Fire. about it that we've been shooting since the beginning of Versus. Oh. Uh, Lena Waif, uh, uh directed it. Um, it's with Amazon. It's going to be crazy. Because it shows you, the, the story is called Gifted in Black, uh, but it's the Versus story, and it shows you how... Um, Who directed and produced it? Uh, Lena Waif. Yeah. Uh, but it shows you how our music always come, how music always helped during hard times. Yep. And you know, like when things are going 100%. on, you you looking for that that song and, and, and music has always been there. And so uh I can't wait for people to see it. It's gonna be crazy. I mean you yo, Mike, they have Gucci man <laughs> and Jeezy. I I was yo, that no, I think people, the whole people world, was calling my phone. Yo. Stop the feed. Yes. Turn it off. I thought it was gonna be like a shoot. Who was with it? <laughs> young Jeezy? Who was uh, it? Gucci man oh, and young Jeezy. God. You know, they had a unfortunate rival where somebody lost their life mm -hmm. and uh and they and and they was they they had to be they wanted to be very transparent uh about the incident to move forward as men which i respected that's why i said you know what um these guys are not at that point in their life anymore they family men you know the the, they, they, the success is where it's at uh they not trying to be on that bullshit no more. So they wanted to um, settle their differences on verses. And I remember being on those phone calls, listening very clear, because I don't really want to put them in a situation where, 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 where they back, where they don't want to be. You know, uh, somebody get hurt again, and I didn't, I didn't want to be responsible for that. So I had to listen and make sure that those brothers were on the same page. And they met about two or three times and, and um, they was very clear that I'm going to be raw and uncut on how I deal with it. If you can't handle it, let's not do it. Mm. You can be raw and uncut. I'm going to have to handle that too. But we men and what we can do is show... Now what's wrong with that? Whoa, it was rough. They had that here too? It was rough. No, that's a battle. That's not a song. You going you that's... watch the Jeezy and Gucci versus oh. you. Gonna, you're going to be like, how did y'all let this go down? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was, it, it was it, the anxiety. It, it was, was no, no, no. It was... Like me watching it, I had anxiety because I know the stories behind both of them. So I was like, "What's the purpose? Who got killed? Tell us the story, Mister Storyteller." I mean, yeah, there's no story. <laughs> That's out, man. I don't want to look like I'm six nine or anything. Man. No, the, the story, story is out. Yeah, you it's can, out. It's out. All you right. could you could say the story. The story. Yeah, is out. I, I guess uh, you know they had issues back in the days, and you know a quick story, and then uh, I, I guess Cheesy sent someone supposedly to try to allegedly to kill Gucci Man, but then Gucci Man. Stopped it and killed the dude that tried to kill him. So, That's an interesting um, scenario. There. Yeah, it's crazy. That's and then they let it go, and now here comes Swiss Beats, which is like the ultimate historical. So the battles on. Who's talking about that with this? Did, did, did the know about this? Everybody knows. Timberlake about knew this. about this, right? I don't know I'm Timberlake not, I'm not, like Timberlake, just a Timberlake white people shit. Did he know about this? Yeah, it? after right. this, right? What about Drake? Some, I saw something. <laughs> about Drake. What about Drake? No, Drake? Drake wasn't on there. Yes, it but, was. Did you have beef with Drake? I don't have, no. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't, was that the other actor or something? Who was there before him? No, no, we 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 had, you know, it was public. Like we we had uh, a couple of words, but oh, you yeah, know, this is some quick shit. But it's cool, it's yeah. cool. I don't, I don't everything's think. cool. <laughs> yeah, everything's cool. Okay. Everything's you, cool. You 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 the, you eliminate your beeps quick, but he, uh, when he can't hold it, he gets pissed off. He gets bad. I, yo, this is crazy, man. I, yo, I'm glad I'm I'm you spaz out, man. I don't believe that. <laughs> it's a good, respectable Don't let the smoothness and coolness right. fool you. Disrespect and Swiss beat don't mix. I just don't believe that's true. He's a nice man. Nah, nah. Mike got it right. You know, why are you trying to ruin everybody's reputation? Nah, ain't no <laughs> reputation. This guy's clean and packed. This is like, the whitest black person I know. <laughs> this guy's super. It was a superlative, man. This guy's nah, superlative. I'm, I'm chilling. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine, man. Like, it's not really beef. You, you know, yeah. like when you think like, it, a lot of it be miscommunication because we don't speak as a culture like no, that, right? Yeah. Like, so, so you know, uh, when, when you're not communicating, it could turn into those misunderstandings. It could turn into what may think is beef. But mm. for me, beef, you know, it has to be physical. Like if, if somebody gets shot, stabbed, broke, broken oh, yeah, up, that's, something that's beef. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Else. Like words and things like that, those are emotional things. Those mm. are people and their feelings. Uh, people insecurities and stuff like that. But that's not beef for me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like beef is like you, you <laughs> beef is a whole nother word. Like 
Like, Tell them start to instigate beef, okay? <laughs> I wasn't going to ask you, like, was there a lot of people getting killed or fucked up on the Rough Rider tour? Do you think I'm going to ask you that? <laughs> hey, I, what, what, he, subliminally, you asked him. Yeah. Just now, right? <laughs> subliminally. I mean, I just heard, you know, I heard. You know, I was on the tour. I was on the shooting tour. We had our own shootouts and sh Like, what, uh, yo, they were notorious. <laughs> Like, it was us and them, and they were doing them shits. You tour with Jay, we tour with Jay. We got both different experiences. Though. Listen to the way he described yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going front. Like, uh, I think we had a really bad shootout. I think it was, like, Albany or Upstate. And then that was the last time we, like, Jay-Z was yeah, like, with guy, us. Yeah, tough guys up there. After that, Jay-Z was not with us together or nowhere after that. It was like, all right, whatever. You know? I bet you had disrespect one of those guys in Albany, and they uh, said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're tougher than what you think, huh? <laughs> I mean, he could tell us who the hotheads were. Obviously, GMX, Styles P was definitely a hothead. You don't fuck with him. Who else in the, the clique? It really wasn't. The clique was the clique, but it was the people that wasn't talking. Was the, those oh, are the yeah, ones. yeah, yeah. Those are the people that's not talking, that's not trying to be on stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones, and that, that's who was around. The artists, they, they, they having fun. They showing mm -hmm. off as well. But it's the quiet people that's that's chilling that don't look like they're not gonna like that's the ones that mm. nobody's paying attention to that's gonna really dance. You know what I'm saying? And so like um but tour was fun. It was fun. Like tour tour was fun. It was happening every night. You know what I'm saying? It's meeting tour. different people. Yeah, meeting different people. Cause you know, the, especially being from New York, everybody hate New Yorkers. Mm. Right? Like you even go to uh, DC, they hate New York. You know, you're talking about Philly, they hate New York. Oh, wow. Right? Like, that close. So imagine when you get to the South. Oh, yeah, it gets worse. Right? It's like, them yeah. New York boys, huh? Like, so we always had to, like, um, protect ourselves because people, they feel like they got to prove something for their city, and we try and get back home. Right? Like, so that's, that's just how it goes with every artist on, on the road. I don't know how it is now, but I You can I get left. You can get left on the road, though. Uh, yeah. You can get lost. Well, there were rules like that too. If you you didn't make it on a tour bus, like the next day, you can get lost. See ya. Shit. <laughs> it's all about. It's just like I'm in the jungle. If your guys not in packs, yeah. you're screwed. <laughs> you better, you better will, know that. They will leave you there. That's a fact. <laughs> tour life was crazy. You know, I can imagine, man. Oh my god, I, I don't even want to like. I, you know, the stories I got is fucked up. Man. <laughs> well, what's your story? I mean, uh, but the, the, uh, since you man. bring them up, I, uh, no, I listen, listen, listen. Yeah, no, 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 you go like this. Said, no, 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 I said you nah, bring nah, them up. Nah, nah, you go, okay. oh man, you don't want to hear a story about us. We had it, but we want to hear some. We want to hear some amazing stories. I try to get beat up. Yeah, this guy try to get me beat up right now. Ain't nobody gonna beat you. You got Mike right here. I'm your co-host. Have another guy called Fifty Cent, who's the same mentality. He's still the old Mike. Yeah, 50 got <laughs> yeah, leave, don't, don't mess with it. Leave, leave him alone. Mike, Just like, leave him alone, okay? <laughs> Stay away from that guy. <laughs> Stay away from this guy. I'm going to yeah. get him on my show, God willing. We need to talk about You got to get 50 on the show. I will. I mean, that's the problem. Sports stars, how many of them came through? We had LeBron and everybody. Who was the sports star that fuck with Rough Riders on tour that you have on stage? and mean. Yeah, that's a fact. Mike was, was we uh, seen Mike, Mike was backstage one yeah. time at the show. I was mad at him. You remember yeah, that what shit? big time n with them me? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean, man. He's like my kids. They do that download disrespect. Right? They download this man, play. You. Oh, this guy. Yeah, he we gotta catch it, right? I ain't gonna lie, he catching every he catch yeah, every Yeah, I mean my kids, my kids. I'm used to my kids trying to download oh, disrespect me. You gotta understand. Got something going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mike know how to spar for real. You gotta yeah, understand yeah, this. Like at this point, yo, he's uh, sparring for real. He's, sparring he's, catching. he's so responsive. He'll hit you by mistake. You'd be like, yo. <laughs> He, he loved knocked you, out his spars. Well, that's bad. I mean, knocked out who? who you spar with, like the trainer. You supposed well, listen, to. Listen, he's trying to get a name <laughs> in the champ of the world. If he's beating my, ass, he's gonna get a prop. Oh, that's a fact. Like you know, that. everybody else is gonna want to use him. People are gonna want to invest money clip. in him and all that. Shit. It's like record. Motherfucker, you beat you, you guys battling. He kicked your ass. You're the best, but you had a bad night. Motherfucker's gonna start investing in him. He kicked the best ass that time. But then when y'all get on, when y'all get on the stage and you got lights, you got drinks, you got popcorn, he can't he can't perform. Mm. He can perform in the gym in the studio, but you get those lights, eating popcorn, drinking champagne. He go, <laughs>
He bad in the gym when the lights are not on. <laughs> it's, it's funny Mike say that. Was that deep. like was that's that like deep. some of the callous of how you got with Jay? Like fighting to do like hits with him, like like jigging my neck and well, you know, money huh? cash hoes. Was that like the callous to bring you over there or how, how did you No, get I with wasn't Jay? really fighting to do tracks with Jay. It was, okay. It was a mutual respect. Um yeah, it was just I was just having fun. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought Jay was I thought Jay was super talented, still is, and we always made great music together. You know, my uncle's D brought me in the office. He wanted to he wanted to meet Greece. Mm. Um, I don't think Greece was around, so he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna bring my nephew down," and I played him a cassette. Oh, wow. And then that next night, we we cut like hey, listen, that's five tracks. Greece. Dame Greece. Dame Greece. Oh, Dame Greece. Okay, okay. he's a producer. Yeah. That new. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did. He produced. Uh, done started or something with yeah. X. Yeah, that's it. That's ain't ain't he produced, that he produced Get At Me, dog. Oh yeah, he did do Get At uh, Me, dog. Him, PK. You know, DMX was like a sex symbol. Facts. You know, they were crazy for us. Yeah, he was doing the movies and all that. I mean, you you had to fight chicks off when DMX walked by in the tour, like. Nah, it's crazy like that. X ain't want nobody to be for to keep them coming. <laughs> Let them scream. That was crazy, man. Tell them I said what's up. That's amazing, man. Did Jay influence you the way you live too? Like, I feel like he, he handed you down info. And I mean, how is it in the studio with this guy? Like, when you working with him, like everything is so, so like secretive and shit. Like, Do you understand uh, like, what he's saying? Every, yeah, like, he's he's doing a couple yeah, of ways, man. Okay. You know, you know. Um, nah, but as far as like how I live. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm I'm inspired by a lot of people. You know, Jay is he's definitely an inspirational person as well. Mm. Um, I'm inspired by like traveling and, and like oh, I said okay. before and seeing different things. Like I never um really seen something that another person have and be like, I, I want that. Oh. You know, like I, I I can say like, oh, I like the TV that this person had, but damn, if I was to do this TV right here, I'll put it like this and do it like that, right? Like I love to see people graduate, um, but then I also love, I love to inspire myself, mm. like to be honest. Although I'm a student of a J, I'm a student of watching okay. Mike, I'm a student of a DMX and many artists, I've always been um, kind of in my own zone, you know, like, I don't know, I'm a little weird sometimes, you know what I'm saying? No, you're not weird, well, you're who you are. Yeah, who I am. Some people might think it's weird, but if somebody's going right, I'm going to go left. You know, like if they if they wearing this, I'm aware of that. Like I never wanted to be like everybody else. Sometimes right is just not your direction. You have to go left sometimes. Definitely, most of the times, because a lot of people are, who we following, they don't even know what they doing. Oh, right? Like so, we can follow people down the wrong down the wrong path. But even though we're right? going down the wrong path, that's another one of our learning process. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to learn to learn your learning process early than later. I right? that's what I think, but. Regardless, you received it, but it's always. I went through a lot of stuff early in life. Well, one thing I learned by watching you guys, because I'm a piece of shit. Like, no, you why? Guys, no, 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 no. No, I'm a piece of don't, shit. Don't say that. No, what? you're not a piece of shit. When did you, you decide about, you were a piece of shit? When did, this, <laughs> you guys have, when did this happen? When was the first day you said I'm a I'm piece of shit? Yeah, and you both have something in common. I got strong women that kind of like defines who you guys are. And that's what you want, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a piece of shit. I don't got nothing. I'm just smashing. <laughs> and dashing. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. I understand. <laughs> Alicia Keys is like one of your A&Rs. Is she secretly, she can folks with you, like, or she tell you she's whack or, you know? Um, I never asked you that, too. She'd be honest about music for sure. Mm. But, like, the way that we live is, like, um, I'm my boss and she's her boss. Mm. Like, I don't own her, she don't own me. Um, and that's just the way that we chose to be. It's like, yo, when people come and ask me about things about her and different mm -hmm. things, I say, listen, you gotta talk to her. You know what I mean? I can't make that decision for her. Cause a lot of people get in, in relationships and think they own something and like, you can't mm -hmm. own another Isn't human. Isn't that a trip? You know I mean? Isn't that a trip? Yeah. That's a trip. Yeah. Some people marry just to have a slave. Yeah. What? Yeah. You can't do that. And, and, and no, that's that's who you are. They got it. No, I got it. <laughs> you are. I'm married for 16 years, so. Oh, you did. You've been married for 16. I did it already. Oh, you, that was brilliant. It was like Joe time. Yeah. yeah, but you gotta do it right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a piece of crap, but. Uh, if you are always 
if you think about yourself as a piece of crap, it's gonna always fail. Nah, but I, yeah, y'all went through the whole life of doing what we do in entertainment. I, I was know. married during that. So touring with Eminem, 50 Cent, and I'm married is overkill. Now <laughs> you guys are like at a different level in life, comfortability, spiritually, physically, like mm -hmm. your mind is. Slick. Well, where are you at in life now then? I don't know where the f going on. I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> y'all don't want that straight. Y'all don't want that straight. Yeah, you what know. you trying to do? It got to be what you want to do. He don't want to do it. I, I, need, I need to learn from y'all. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't want to do it, man. He Keep just it said real. it. Like, you know, you gotta two be what you bosses. Wanna do. That's it. I mean, for me, stability is the yeah. key. You know, like having stability, having having a, a stable environment so you can function in a non-functioning environment mm -hmm. is like for me that works. You know, like if I wasn't stable in in in, in, in this unstable environment, I've been went crazy by now. Like seriously, you know, and you know, like uh, women, they know how to really keep us like on point. Yeah. You know, like. I, my schedule, man, you know, even like with the kids and women are powerful, strong. Like a lot of guys, is, you know, they scared of strong women. Mm. And, and like, cause they weak themselves, but it's like, um, I feel like women definitely deserve a lot of props for like uplifting themselves uh, first and uplifting, you know, who they're with and, you know, my wife, it's powerful and I see her uplift herself, wake up five in the morning, do her meditation, do her workout, handle our kids, wake me up, fix me breakfast. Like that's like, that's, what? that's, that's, yeah, like that's a vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, no man over there. Like, you know, like, yeah, we, we got those things, but, but, but those people on time out when she's moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. And time out early in the morning, we got to feed breakfast, get in the shower, do this, do this. Yeah. <laughs> And once she gets up, I get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, man. I mean, I said it earlier to start it off. I was excited. You know, every time I see you, Alicia Keys music. What's up, man? I don't know. You keeping that in the raps too? Or I got to wait till mm. I talk to her. She, she's having fun. You know, yeah. she did a, a Christmas project with yeah, Alicia Keys that. records. Mm -hmm. Did very well for her. And, um, you know... She got all her rights back and, and everything. And that was a fight, I bet, huh? Wow. How many years did that take? 20. Uh -huh. Woo, I know that. I know yeah. how many years did that take. Yeah, I think she's like one of the only artists that fulfilled a 20 year contract. Listen, you know what? Like it's, Some of the people probably had to die to get it, huh? 20 years. <laughs> yeah, they almost. Oh my God, man. I was at to put music together with Beyonce. Is that another process too? Or you get the what song? What was that like? Yeah. Um, I mean, B is, she's super talented. What she, song did you do? Uh, man, a lot. Cool. Mm. What's your best song with her? I like "Give Me Body." Mm. Give me body because, like, <laughs> you know, <DJ>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because she had, you know, it was very competitive. She had Rodney Jerkins upstairs, yeah. mm. and she had another producer upstairs, and she came down and was like, "Yeah, you know who's upstairs?" What? And um, so I'm gonna be going back around. Her way. She did. The, she put the right book bag on my back. Wow, I, I, know, I met a lot of producers that did stuff for her, and they'd just be bugged out. Like you, what, what do you, what do you feel? Like, is it a relationship, or I mean, we knew them from Destiny Child days. I just but. feel like it's my, like my sister. Like I just, yeah. you know, like um, when I'm in the studio with somebody, it's not, it's not a scared thing. Like a lot of people go in with artists and they nervous and scared. Like I go in there and be like, nah, we gotta do this over or. And I also listen to what they, you know, what they want me to Both do. Critique, because yeah. it's a fifty-fifty partnership yeah. at, at this time, right? Like, I'm the producer. She's is that the writer. like being a trainer for a fighter? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like sometimes you're gonna have to turn this way, although you comfortable this way. You know, like, go south part of these next couple of sessions. Like, nah, like no, just listen to me, and then, and we we bounce off of each other. Do you guys sometimes disagree? A lot of times. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, a lot of times. Most of the tracks that I give artists, they don't want. Yeah, there's always some weird they want. Then you yeah. give it to someone else? Never felt. Yeah, but I came up with a strategy mm -hmm. on how to make it work. Because I, 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 I was like, you know what? No, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got the munchies? Yeah, you know, you do. 
You know, this guy lives in the Iron Man crib. I don't know. You, Excuse you, me? You're the mansion guy. You know, he bought the Iron Man crib in the movie. Tony Stark? Yeah, how, how was that, yo? Is it really like that My over dad, there? Like, I know I saw the movie, though. Like, can you talk about that, please? Like, this guy is exquisite, man. <laughs> oh, Listen, I don't know what the f you're talking about. What happened? <laughs> what are you talking about? Come on. This is Yo, this guy bought the Iron Man crib. Hey, come about on, it, baby. Let's talk check about it out. It. It's in the what movie. What are you talking about Iron the, the, Man the, That's crib. the one with the whole broke up and yeah, they're fighting the Razor House. Yeah, that is a, yeah, that's it. This is crazy. I, oh, this is your crib, right? Yeah. How, did that, how do that feel? You got to come, morning, you, driving you gotta up come and, and see. Shit. Both of you guys should come and see. Inshallah. Right. Inshallah. You come up, you driving, talking shit. You know, come Think on. Think about ghetto times. <laughs> and they what are you laughing about? I don't know. I'm just not. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I think about ghetto times, looking at my mansion and shit, looking at my birds all flying and shit. And I think, fuck, oh, I go Oh, yeah, I remember the birds. <laughs> Listen, I go, some, I go to certain countries, people think I'm fucking the fucking man. And then I say, hey, it really means nothing. If, you know, I found out in life, all this shit don't mean nothing if, if you don't have something worth giving it all up to it for. Mm. Mm, that's crazy. Say that last part one more no. time. It, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing if you don't have a reason to give it all up for. There you go. Wow. That's what it's about. Um, I agree with that. But you know what? Most people don't understand. Tearing yourself down just as exhilarating as building yourself up. The same feeling, same emotion. It feels good hurting yourself sometimes when, you, when you're that high. Yeah, I feel, I feel like X used to do that. Can't handle that fame. Yeah, I feel, I, feel like, I feel like Dog used to do that a little mm -hmm. bit. I think a lot of people. You always that, have mm -hmm. to say best. He has to say negative things about it because too many people saying positive things about it. Positive, hey, you're God, hey, you're legend, hey, you're this, hey, you're that. And it distorts me. It distorts my thinking about who I am. Mm. Wow. You know, it distorts, hey, this is cool, but it has to stop eventually with me, knowing that this is just comes with the job and it's not, it's just an illusion. Mm. You know? Just comes with the job. Has Swiss Beats ever had like you know? Was there some bad years that you remember? Was it really to the lowest of the low? Because every time I meet you, happy, yeah. chill. Um, I just don't complain a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's listening? No one cares. Ain't nobody cares. So we, we were gonna complain about. Wow. It. I, I speak with my family members. I, you know, I come up with certain things that I like doing that make me happy. And I move on with my day. But I remember um, you know, I had meningitis, uh, spinal meningitis. And uh, that was a law telling me I need to sit down. Oh, wow. I was moving too fast, moving too much. And um, I had to learn how to walk again, the, the whole thing. And then when I was in the hospital, um, I got a clear view of who was around me, what I didn't like. Cause, what? cause, think about it. Like, you know, we 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 go to the same destination every day. Like, it, it, you know, you could run to that destination, but the day that you actually walk, you're like, oh, that's the cleanest. Oh, that's the see thing you haven't seen. Yeah, you get to see fast. things so yeah. much clear that things are slowed down. And so, um, when I came up out of that, alhamdulillah, I just changed my whole focus, you know, wow. on, on how I was moving because, you know, if you don't evaluate yourself, you got to evaluate yourself every couple of years. You know, it used to be five. I would say three because the world is moving so fast. And, you know, I started to evaluate my, my I call surroundings. it inventory, self-inventory. Yeah, self-inventory. Mm -hmm. That's, like, very important because you can get so complacent in that same spot that you're not even growing. You oh, understand? Shit. So, like, you got to say, like, man, because I used to hate, uh, even in the studios when they used to never change the couches and we spending millions of dollars. I'm like, yo, they never even changed the couch. Like, this, Damn. like they can't change the couch in here. Right, and so that's, that, that's also like with your friends mm. or, you know, some people that you outgrew as friends, right? right? Because everybody's cool when you're saying yes. You know, so I went on a mission. I, I, was gonna, I, I said no for a whole year oh, just, to, just to evaluate my surroundings, mm. right? It's and, a book, The Power of the Word, wow. no. Mm. It's a good book. I got to get that book. Power of the Word, Because I definitely no. used it. And, and it. and it brought out people's true colors when you're saying no. Everybody going to come to the party, but who going to clean it up with you? Oh, wow. and, 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 and so, like, that's um, that's just how, how I've been moving. But it's definitely been a lot of hard times. Mm -hmm. The hard time is also being disappointed in a lot of people that, 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 that you have respect for. Oh, wow. And just seeing that, like, wow, like, 
these people were never, they, they was all for themselves. You know, they never really was for you. I put most of my time and interest to the people who disappointed me the most. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, it comes like that. It happens like that. We're just part of school. This whole world is a big school and we all each other's teachers. Mm-hmm. We learn from each other. I mean, I don't see you with nobody, Mike. Is, does it really shrink like that? Like, Excuse me? I don't see you with a lot of people. So is it? does it shrink? Or are you... Did you shrink everything? Just family. No, it's not. It's not a lot of people. And shit. They're new people mm -hmm. that that think the same way we do and want to live their lives the same way we want to live. Okay. And that's what happens. We we get disassociated when we're younger, um, picking out the wrong friends, don't even know how to pick out the right mate, and then eventually mm -hmm. you come to that um, time in your life where you ascend, and sometimes the people can't ascend with you that you love, and you kill yourself by keep trying to keep yourself at that level to be the people you love. Mm. But they can't ascend with you. It's just, it's like that sometimes. I don't understand why it's that way when Allah puts the light on certain people. And I don't know. It's just you can't handle it. A hundred million people writing you, caring about what you're <laughs> saying, and then that follow, follow them. Well, you know, they try, they make this whole world come across as a, as a worship, worship cult. That's what this world is. Since the beginning of time, that's all we knew how to do was worship. That's mm. deep. I know one of your lows was when DMX passed away. That was rough. I didn't hear you. You were you were off the grid. Bro. Yeah, it was bad, huh? Of course, because like you know, um, I knew where he was at, and I knew that um, I knew that he was ready to graduate um, from his current situation that he was dealing with, and that was the hard part. And I remember us working on the album, um, and him having uh, the concept for the album and. You know, a lot of people wanted his album to sound so killer and so and, and so street. And then, you know, he was saying, that's not where I'm at right now. You know, like he wanted to get into, he had these TV shows that he was about to, uh, that he had deals mm -hmm. for. So he was transitioning into a different space. And then uh, once we worked, we worked out of uh, Snoop Studio in LA out here the whole time, because that's where he felt comfortable. We had a pool table in there. That was the, cl the classic verses was in there. Yeah, Snoop was cooking mm -hmm. food for X every day. The ultimate gentleman, you know, like to see another wow. artist cooking food for, for 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 another artist was 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 commendable to see, and 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 the, and the love was real. And then we actually did verses in in that studio, and then that's when X knew that when Snoop did verses uh, DMX, we stayed there, and then we had the plan after we do the album. Now he was going to get his uh, physical form right and and his health. Mm. And um, I remember I was on my way to Saudi, and um, I told him, I said, you should come with me to Saudi. Let's go over there. I got a train over there that can get you started. And he was like, all right, cool. That sounds like a great idea. Then he calls me back, and I'm like, I should have. I never lied to him, but I should have, like, lied to him this time. Oh, man. And um, he asked me how long was the flight, and I said, 16 hours. And he was like, uh, oh, no. I wouldn't be next to you that fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, wow. And that was the last time that was the last time I spoke to him. Mm. Um, it's a scary it, place, boy, huh? It's being out living life a scary place. Yeah, it is. A it scary is. place. Were you frustrated that like you, Jay, I interviewed everybody, Jada, why everybody? Like you just can't help a person. You know when you can't help somebody? Cause they're the the situation is unhelpable. I guess. Really. I mean, I think his situation was helpable. I just yeah. don't think the time was on his side. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Like he gained oh, a lot. He gained okay. a lot of weight because, you know, uh, he was out the game. And, and again, it was the most sober I've seen him like oh, wow. since I've known him, and that's why he gained all the weight. And I think um, first thing that happened when you come out of rehab, gain weight. Yeah, he 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 gained that weight, and then uh, he went back and and and, and he he unfortunately hurt himself. But um, for me, ever since I known DMX, like he was in pain, right? I, like since 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 I was a kid, damn. And so um, I just I just know I just know, I know that he's in a better place now. Um, he came to me in a dream, the whole thing, because I was definitely on a mission, you know, like like uh, losing a brother so close. Mm. It just it just felt I never felt that before. You know, I lost a lot of people in the streets and stuff like that. But like losing X, still to this day, sit on this couch talking about it, it don't feel real to me. You know, um, but uh, forever dog. You know what I'm saying? X. Yeah.
Well, listen, um, they're trying to get us to wrap this up real quick. Oh, they got to go somewhere? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But listen, um, what do you want the people to, um, to know about you? Where can they find you? There's a bunch of millions and millions of people watching you. Um, I'm on Instagram, uh, The Real Swiss. I, actually, I was about to turn off my Instagram and all the social media, to be honest. I know, we just going for the show. You know? <laughs> no, I know, I'm just yeah. thinking out loud with, with The Cut Real Swiss. as soon as you say it. Yeah, The Real Swiss, S-W-I-Z-Z-Z, three Zs. Mm. And once again, we have oh, some man. tickets. God damn it. Hotboxing.com. Okay. Hotboxing.store. <laughs> okay, let's get it. Thank Never you. Never fails. We you. have Thank a bunch you. of goodies Hot in here. Hotboxing.store. If you don't want to indulge, you can, a um, bunch of goodies. Okay. If you don't okay. want to indulge, you have friends and we stuff. We smoke a weed or mm -hmm. And That's my wife. I'm going to pass this right to her. It's Tyson 2.0. You know where to yes. go. Okay, thank you. Give Swiss some chicken. You want some chicken, man? Chicken. No, I'm good. I'm good. I had sure? I, was, I had food. Huh? Oh, Dave's hot Dave's chicken. Hot yeah, chicken. It's, it's the best. You should try it. I'll try it. Like, mm, it's like a little tasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, there goes that. There goes that. Uh, it's, thanks, Swiss. Where are you f***ing at this from? It's like, what are you doing? Uh, this is like the Maury uh, one, right? No, nah, no, nah, yeah. this is um, Belvedere. <laughs> yes, and that's another episode of Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. And... Ooh, good. And thank Listen. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, my brother. <laughs>